six for geometry, which is proving geometric relationships. Um, discussed in the previous class, the uh, notion of uh, starting a car, right? Which, um, when you start a car, it, uh, it's a pretty simple direction. We don't have to relive all of the inner workings of, of uh, starting a car, the you know, igniting, the combustion engine, and so on and so forth. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to utilize what are called theorems, and it's a statement that can be and has been proven. Okay, so it requires some proof. It doesn't. Um, it's just not something that we just can kind of take for granted. Okay, we've actually seen some. Okay, we are, uh, have already done some proofs together that have uh, proven some theorems. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you one of them in just a moment. Um, one of the things that we should discuss here uh, is. In your, your book it has these what are called flowchart proofs um, and I want you to never do these okay we are gonna exclusively do two column proofs in this course okay so here's a, a theorem right um, and you see less than 2.5 okay where there's the uh, supplementary uh, angle proof okay it's this guy so let's go back was 2.5 just the other day and uh, this guy right here right where we had angles one and supplementary to three two supplementary to three and what we proved is that one and two are going to indeed, indeed be congruent because both of those angles are supplementary to the same angle and that right there is a proof okay it gives us the theorem that angles supplementary to the same angle are congruent, okay? What that is, is it has its own name. We're not gonna rewrite that whole thought and go relive that whole thought process when we're citing it as reasoning. We actually can just refer to this now as the congruent supplements theorem. Oops. So we'll shortcut the names for these things, but there's no reason to go relive the entire thing. Okay. Next, um, it's the notion of this. We're going to take a, a familiar uh, scenario where we have angles one, two, three, and four, something that we've already discussed previously in the course. And what we have here is that we have some vertical angles. Well, vertical angles have the same measurement, therefore they are congruent. Okay. It's pretty simple. So. If I know this, and I know that the measure of angle 3 is equal to 128, can I solve for the other three angles? The measures of angles 1, 2, and 4. Well, here's what the, look like, the work is going to look like, okay? It's going to be pretty straightforward. So the measure of angle 1, we should know right away. It's going to be 128. And it's congruent to angle 3, and the reason we know that is we need to describe its relationship, which is vertical, vertical to angle 3. So that's our justification. Okay? Next, if we want the measure of angle 2, now I don't need you to show me that 180 minus 128 is equal to 52. You can do that on a calculator. You can do that, many of you, in your head. The big thing is that to show me your work, rather than showing me the calculation, because calculators do calculations, right? I don't need you to, you're not going to video yourself doing the calculation on a calculator, okay? But instead, what you're going to do is give me the justification of why you could say these two were supplementary. And the reason why is because they are a linear pair. They're a pair of angles that share a line. And the reason they are supplementary is because they are a linear pair. Last but not least, we have the measure of angle 4. Now, why actually, it's also a linear pair with 3 and 1, but why even do that? Since we found 2, which is vertical, I think that's easier. And we've now used the solution for one thing to help us get the solution for another. It's kind of how theorems work, right? We're going to use logic from something proving a relationship, and in many times, in many cases, we're going to help us use that to prove something else. Okay, let's do another problem. We have 101, and we have 4x minus 3. 
Okay, and we are going to solve for x. Now, I know you guys can do the algebra here. The big thing is I need justification of how you set up the problem. So if you just start this problem as 4x minus 3 equals 101 and you started operating on this, that would not get full credit. You need to make sure you tell me these are vertical angles. That's how we actually came up with that justification. Now the rest we can do. I'm very confident in your ability to do the algebra at this point, right? So 4x minus 3 is equal to 104. I'm sorry, 4x is equal to 104 because we added 3 to both sides. We're going to divide by 4 on both sides now. Okay, and x is going to be equal to 26. And again, I'm very confident in your ability to do that algebraic problem, right? Of course you can do that. But for me, the big thing is that you need to make sure that you cite the reasoning for why you set the problem up that way. That's really you showing your work. Of course, you need to show your algebra as well, but uh, the more important thing for me to uh, introduce to you at this point is that. Last thing, I'm going to do a little proof here. Similar to a proof that you'll see in your textbook, maybe even on a quiz or a test. Um, where we're going to have these line segments, A, B, C, D, and E. So we have one giant line, line segment, A, E, and we have these subsections. What we're going to be given is that A, B is going to be congruent to D, E. Moreover, that B, C is going to be congruent to C, D. And what we're going to prove is that AC is congruent to CE. Well, it requires proof. You can't just say, well, I just look at it, right? And I have the, the two parts are congruent. Well, we need to succinctly state why that's the case. So we need to go through a two-column proof here, okay? And go step by step and explain the reasoning behind this. So it's going to be a rather uh, you know, linear sort of thinking for us. Um, and there's a logical flow. So the first thing, of course, that we start with is we're going to restate that AB is congruent to DE as well as BC congruent to CD, and that is given. Now, let's see what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that this entire thing is equal to this entire thing. Well, let's even just start with AB and DE, right? So AB and DE we know are equal, but let's add on a segment to it. Let's add on the same thing to both sides. Let's add on BC, which we can just do. You can just add the same thing to both sides through the addition property, okay? But now that we've established that, right, we have AB plus BC. Think about what BC is also equal to. We established in the given that BC is the same thing as CD. And all we did there was substitute. We did a direct replacement of CD for BC. Now, think about what we have here. What AB plus BC, what those are. AB plus BC equals an entire segment, AC. Segment plus segment equals whole segment. Same thing as CD, or DE plus CE, doesn't matter, right? It's going to be CE. Segment plus segment equals whole segment. That is specifically segment addition. Now, if we know AB plus BC and DE plus CD are equal, and we know that AB plus BC is AC, DE plus CD is CE, we can make the conclusion that AC is congruent to CE. Right? And that logic, of course, is the transitive property. A equals B, then B equals C. I'm sorry, A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Three things all each used twice. That's it. I went through it rather quickly, um, but you should have a sufficient amount of information to go through this assignment. 2.6. Good luck.